So a little more than three years ago, Lisa introduced us to a Berlin man who was in recovery from a hunting accident that resulted in a broken back. 2011, Mark Flaunlacher lost his footing coming out of a tree stand, plunged 15 feet to the ground. Doctors said he was paralyzed, would never walk again. Mark said, nope. Mark was able to walk using forearm crutches and eventually unassisted. Adaptive sports equipment enabled him to play lacrosse. He was even able to surf. Unfortunately, that freedom was short-lived. While surfing, Mark broke his neck. He's back in a wheelchair, but guess what? That's not slowing him down either. And Mark joins us now here in Historic Studio D. Mark, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Jim. So tell us about the, this, this second injury. Um, yeah, uh, in August of 2014, I... Uh, was surfing in the morning um, I mean it was probably you know a medium-sized wave day nothing crazy and um, on one of my waves I went to punch through the, the the wave to dive through it and I didn't make it all the way through and it pulled me over and, and uh, slammed me on my head and I broke my uh, neck up at uh, C3 4 and 5 vertebrae and um, was flown to shock trauma. Well, I was saved by a uh, Samaritan, and then EMT took over, and I was flown to shock trauma. And like Humpty Dumpty, they put they put me back together right again, there. and uh, and uh, and I've been uh, fighting to uh, recover ever since. Mark, I'm sorry it happened. <laughs> and I know it might be kind of tough. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, no problem. So, what was was there a moment that you realized that you were back to square one again? <laughs> square one. Uh, I wish I was back at square one. Um, I, I was considerably more um, injured than my first accident. Wow. I, I kid, you know, I would have given anything to be a paraplegic. Um, the uh, accident, when I initially happened, um, I was paralyzed from my shoulders below my shoulders so I pretty much couldn't move anything I could blink and I could talk and uh, kind of move my shoulders around a little bit and um, so for you know the first month or so I was I was looking at that um, which is considerably worse than just not being able to walk um, so uh, you know f fortunately I've been blessed to have a tremendous amount of recovery and I've been able to get back into a lot of the things that I I really enjoyed doing you know playing with your lacrosse and and uh, biking and um, you know what I was going to ask you about that when we talked to you in in, in 2013 mm -hmm. you were organizing wheelchair lacrosse so you are yeah. still active in adaptive sports yes absolutely what, what are you doing um, well it, you know the adaptive sports world is is, is a place where we live in areas where we may be the especially like me i i live in berlin and there's really not that many other people that are spinal cord injured or or in that nature there's lots of disabilities but you know people like me so sp the, the adaptive sports really gives us the opportunity to get together and and play with other people and 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 share you know experiences with uh with people that are going through similar situations as you but um in lacrosse it's it's just like uh field lacrosse we've got you know everything that they would wear into field lacrosse game but we play on a roller hockey rink and we um, use specialized wheelchairs that are less prone to tipping over mm -hmm. and we go out there and, and, <laughs> and whack each and other get around. it on yeah, <laughs> so, yeah we don't uh, we don't mess around we're very competitive people and um, nobody who plays a wheelchair sport is is uh, is a pacifist right <laughs> Okay, so you created a company called Shore Accessible. What's yes, that all about? Um, well, during the course of my, well, the last five years, um, I began to notice that um, the more we went out, the, the, the more I began to realize that, that there was, there was a, a lack of accessibility for, for people in wheelchairs and walkers and, you know, and I just felt like you know, when, when people start businesses, I, I, I feel as though they they're genuinely want to want to give the best service possible to their customers, right. and that's why they went into business. And um, I began to realize that a lot of people just didn't really understand 
what accessibility really was right. and what was accessible, what wasn't accessible. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, um, very little, very few places are within compliance with you know, the 2010 ADA, to be more specific. Um, so I thought there might be a, 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 a market or a, a potential to provide a service to businesses that, that wish to improve their accessibility right. by providing them site evaluations and going through the checklist right down the line and letting, letting the business owner know where there might be deficiencies in their accessibility and then, and then informing them on, on cost-effective ways to to remedy these situations. And 50% of the things that, that lead to accessibility issues in a retail or a restaurant establishment can be done for free. They, they, don't, they won't require any, any money at all. Right. It's, just, it's just either you know, being aware of it and, and taking steps to alleviate it. The other 50%, most of those things, you can probably do for less than 500 bucks. I right. mean, these things are not the, you're not knocking down walls, you're not redoing you know, your entire floor plan. These are small improvements that you can make that'll make your store or your restaurant more accessible to all your customers. And I feel that it's very important for, it should be important to the business owner. And I, I really do, through my conversations with people, I really do believe that it's, it's a matter of unawareness. It's not a matter of They just don't know. Negligence, correct. I, I really do believe that most people just don't understand it. And, and if you go through and you go through the list and then you check off the priorities of, of that the government set up. I mean, the right, government has right. set these guidelines up. You go through the priorities and you try and make improvements as you can and and your customers will appreciate it. Mark, thank you for doing that too. Terrific <laughs> job with that. It's wonderful to hear. And how are things looking for you? What's your prognosis real quick? Um, I I I back on my feet. Um, on a therapeutic level and around my house, I, I walk with forearm crutches again. Out in the community, I stick with the wheelchair. My balance is is a is a big issue for me, but um, you know, my prognosis is to work and uh, and, to, and to get it done and try and try and get try and get myself back on my feet and and do everything I can. You are a beast. <laughs> you are a beast, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank for you very Appreciate much. Talking to you. Now, if you'd like more information on Shore Accessible, all you have to do is go to our website, themarvelife.com.